I bought a Prevo, and in this video we're going to be talking about it. If you watched my last RV-related video about the sale of my 2000 Holiday Rambler Endeavor, you may have noted that I commented that we were not getting out of RVing, that we were going to be upgrading, and I was going to do a video on what we were upgrading to. And this is it. What we have here is a 2001 Prevo XL45. Uh, it's an XL2 model, specifically. It's a 45-foot, it has two slides, and I'm going to go through some of the details why we bought it and give you a walkthrough. So I have to start out by saying that this is really exciting for me and for my family. We, when we originally bought our first RV, a Prevo is really what we wanted, uh, but it was not in the cards at the time. Combination of the cost of them, what we would be able to get for what was in our budget, uh, especially with inflated prices during COVID and things of that sort. The other thing was that we weren't at that point certain how permanent of a fixture RVing was going to be in our lives. We're now three and a half years roughly into being RVers and it's very apparent that this is not only the best way for us to travel but the way that we enjoy traveling and we also have a much better idea about how we like to travel. And one thing that became very apparent early on was that when we do RV trips, we're not simply going to a neighboring lake or even um, maybe a couple lakes over a uh, state park someplace nearby and staying for a long period of time. We're basically on a road trip. We're touring. We're going a lot of, we're covering a lot of miles in a short period of time. And one thing that normal, that many normal RVs tend to struggle a little bit with when you start to push them on these longer trips is being able to cover a lot of miles in a day uh, comfortably for from a driving perspective. You've probably seen Prevo-based RVs going down the road, but where you see these Prevos usually is in other kinds of tour bus applications, whether it's a, a seated charter coach or whether you've got an entertainer coach where you've got rock bands, performers, whatever, going on the road. What you have here is a commercial grade bus that is built to go a million miles from the factory. It's a very high-end, very durable, very maintainable kind of a vehicle, and these are the, all the sorts of things that really appealed to me, especially as somebody that turns my own wrenches and works on my own vehicles. Prevo has been around for a long time, and for several decades, the Prevo bus conversions have been at the top end of the RV market, and this one's no different. Now, when you look at buying a Prevo, there's a few things that go with that. Prevo builds the bus, and in this case, they also built the slides. These are two factory slides, which is very desirable if you're going to get one that has slides versus one that's been uh, chopped up and done by a third party. But Prevo themselves do not do the interior conversions. There's a number of companies that do these conversions. Some of the, the two of the most well known ones are Liberty and Marathon. Uh, they've been around for a long time. They do high-end conversions. Really any conversion you find on these is going to be high-end. This was done by a company called Roadshow out of New Orleans and there were a few features about it that really appealed to us and part of why we decided to buy it. Uh, because these buses are designed to go a million miles from the factory, uh, you can buy one that even has a hundred thousand miles on it or even 200 and you've got a whole lot of life left in the bus and in all of the components. This has about 98,000 miles as it sits. Uh, when we do our first trip we'll get over a hundred and for the amount of time that we expect to own it and use it, it's unlikely that we're going to get anywhere close to that high mark. If you're a careful observer of Prevos, you may notice that there are some differences on the front end of this versus the normal 2001. And yes, this has been updated. It has the updated front end, updated headlights. Uh, the headlights have actually been upgraded with LEDs. And I bought this from a company out in Arizona and it had been owned by Border Coach Group that had purchased it and had owned it for a couple of years. They'd gone through and they'd done a decent amount of work to it. Um, I've since made my own list of things that I want to do with do on it and we're gonna go now walk around it I'll show you what the bays and what the interior is like and tell you a little bit about what I'm planning on doing so let's uh, take a look as you walk up and open the door on a Prevo the first thing that you immediately notice is just how heavy this front door is and it gives you a strong feeling of quality uh, if you think about an old Mercedes that had a door that uh, felt like a bank vault when you opened and closed it, this is no different, and I'll close it here 
just you can you can hear what a solid uh, close closing and latching that this has. If you think about uh, my old RV or a lot of standard RVs, everything is very lightweight and it it feels that way and it sounds that way. And this was one of the things that we were looking for uh, with a Prevo. The interiors on these are all going to be a little bit different just because each converter is going to do things a little bit differently. And because these tend to be built uh, to the specs of the individual who is buying them, you're going to find a lot of variation. Here's the driver's area. This is really fairly standard from Prevo, uh, other than having the wood grain around the dash, and you have a, a more comfortable upgraded seat versus stock. The I really like the layout. It's simple. It's uh, it's simple, it's utilitarian, but you have everything that you need with it. Uh, the engine in back is a Detroit Series 60, and you've got your controls and a little display for the onboard computer. As you look in the back, one of the things that appealed to us was that this was uh, a, a, an elegant and attractive, uh, but not overdone interior. You see a lot of uh, these Prevos, especially from the 90s and early 2000s, that to us, uh, the styling just isn't on the inside, just isn't quite what we prefer. A big thing that we were really looking for uh, in upgrading to a different RV and part of what appealed to us about a Prevo is that they tend to have a whole lot more windows. You get a much better exterior view versus a lot of RVs. If, if you think about our Endeavor, the inside of it was still nice, but you didn't have very many windows and you tended to feel... Uh, like you were kind of in a box when you were inside the RV. Of course, for us, we tended to be outside doing things, but still, it's nice to get a good view of the outside and, and be able to see the place that you're staying. The kitchen has ample area, uh, actually pretty similar to what we had before. And although there are fewer cabinets than we had in our previous RV, the space is better laid out, and so you end up having just as good functionality. Uh, up front there's two TVs, both this one on the passenger side, and then there's a flip down TV that's really only usable when you're parked with the slide out, so it's nice to have the pair. Over here there's a couple of cabinets that are only accessible with the slide out, so we made sure to only put things there that were uh, things we were going to need when we were stopped. This RV has a residential fridge in it, and we actually had uh, asked to have a different fridge put in versus the one that was in here. Uh, you can see we've already put all of our magnets from our previous trips on, and we'll be adding to those. As we move towards the center of the coach, this gets into the biggest thing that we were looking for, and part of what really drew us to this one was the triple bunk setup. Uh, we have three kids, and one thing that we were really trying to get away from uh, with our previous RV was having the couches up front that just made a lot of extra work with either having to make the couches into beds and then tear them down, um, or otherwise just leaving them out and making things feel messier. The kids are really excited about having their own space, and this should make things a whole lot nicer for them and for us on the road, and leaves the front of the coach open to be the living space normally. Um, we have a shower here that original that's really quite generous in size. I'll show you here. and. You can see I need to put up, uh, I've got a holder for the shower wand that I need to put up and then uh, get that on. But we're really happy about this. It's nice to be able to have a full-size shower when you're uh, on the road. Uh, when we first looked at this, this uh, shower glass was all clear, so I had them add frosting so that someone can be taking a shower and still having some privacy. Um, on the left here is the toilet closet and what something... Uh, there's a macerator toilet here, and then something that we had added was this stacked Splendid washer and dryer. Uh, it's nice to have the separate washer and dryer units, and the dryer is not one of the heat pump styles. It's a standard uh, resistive heating element, so it's a little bit less efficient, but it dries a whole lot better, which is uh, something that we're really looking forward to. And with five of us on the road and going for longer trips, we do tend to do a lot of laundry. So being able to effectively run two loads at, the at a time, having uh, one in the dryer and one in the washer is going to be something we're really looking forward to. The tile in the bathroom wall that you'll also see in the back has been updated versus what was there originally, which is nice. Uh, across from the bunks, we've got 
the vanity and plenty of space for multiple people to be brushing their teeth at once. And then as we get to the back, uh, we're into the bedroom. Uh, queen bed, we'd been hoping for a king, but in this uh, year range, there's just not very many that have king beds. It's something that seems to have become more popular around the 2010 and later time period. Uh, but in some ways this was nice because we had the mattress that we liked uh, from our old bed and we were able to just bring that in here since it was a queen. Uh, plenty of storage on either side. Another thing to point out uh, that I'll just point out here, um, the lights above the, all the overhead lights have been converted to LED. So that's really nice, both from a heat production standpoint and then also from an energy consumption standpoint. And if you see those uh, little spotlights that are not just above the bed, but then all around the coach, all of those have USB ports in them, which is going to be really nice for charging. One of the things that we're trying to do is simplify uh, our cord and charging uh, set up because the reality is with five of us and the way things are these days with all kinds of digital devices, uh, there's a lot of charging going on and it would be, it's nice to not have to cart around a bunch of chargers. So in a couple of areas, we've added some USB ports. We're going to add some USB ports to the outlets on either side of the bed here. Here we've got another uh, new flat screen TV uh, with speakers and I've already installed a subwoofer under the bed to add to that, which is uh, very nice. You may have noticed up front uh, an, an AV unit similar to this, and uh, basically you can take multiple HDMI uh, inputs as well as Bluetooth audio or other things and then output them. Uh, I have the front set up now so that it will output to both TVs simultaneously from a DVD player. There's a DVD player located behind here as well. And I may update the speakers at some point. We'll have to see what the sound is like on those. Then coming to the way back, you can see the closet, which is really quite cavernous. There's a lot of space all the way around for my wife and I to store our clothes. And then there's plenty of space, drawers, and then floor space to be able to put whatever uh, else we need. One thing that's really nice about this bus is that you don't have to access the engine through the bedroom. That was something we really were getting tired of in the old RV, uh, both me because that's a, not a pleasant way to have to work on the engine, and my wife because there's no way to do that without getting a bunch of grease into the bedroom. So now let's go do a walk around outside and I'll show you what the bays look like. Before I go outside, just gonna mention two more things about this that we really, really like. Although we have three bunks and that's where the kids are going to stay, these two couches both actually fold out. So we have even more room for overflow sleeping if that ever becomes an issue. Um, I do have this uh, cover off. That's covering these air powered locks for the slide. And that uh, brings up another point that I wanted to make. The slides are air powered uh, as opposed to hydraulic uh, or mechanical and they also have uh, air seals so they should seal a whole lot better from any kind of weather uh, and when they're out these airlocks when they're out or in these airlocks hold them into place so it's just a much much better higher end uh, higher quality design that really makes it apparent going down the road just how much better built this is versus our previous RV uh, or a lot of standard RVs so let's go outside now I'll just walk around and talk about a couple of things. Another thing that really appealed to me about this uh, particular Prevo that we were looking at is that this has what's called the 365 conversion on the steer tires and then also on the tag axle tires. What that means is that the standard tires, which are a 315 millimeter width, have been replaced with uh, 365 millimeter width tires. This has become a popular uh, upgrade on RVs specifically. And what it ends up doing is that because the tire is larger and can have a higher weight capacity, you can run them at a lower PSI. As I talked about in my super singles video, when you're able to do that, you're able to have that lower PSI makes the uh, ride more comfortable. And this bus is very, very comfortable. I'll talk about the driving in a little bit. So the bays on this are significantly different from what I had before. First off, like a commercial bus, you've got this really nice uh, translating upward pull. Everything is, is very solid, solidly built. And because the Prevos are a unibody, here you've got all of the bays actually go the full way through. Uh, but the others are more filled, as you'll see in a bit. 
But here, this forward bay, you've got the full width of the bus. You've got a really good height. You have a lot of space. Uh, as you can see, we don't have much in here yet, and it's not very well organized. But my plan is to put some sliding trays that will allow us to easily access things here. Also point out the LED upgrades are most of the way around. Um, the marker lights are all LED as well, not just the headlights. Here, before I open it, you can see this is the air inlet for the generator, which is on the other side. Here you've got the dual uh, trace inverters. There's actually enough inverting power here for the rooftop AC units to run off of the inverter if you have enough electrical power. And then uh, for here for now, uh, we've got the our griddle as well as uh, in the back you, we have our little fire pit that we like to roast marshmallows on. I think what I'm going to do at some point is uh, make a slide out tray so that the griddle can be more or less permanently mounted and just come out as opposed to having to set it up every time. Uh, that's something that with how much we tend to move around campsites when we're on the road, uh, it gets kind of annoying so it would be nice to be able to simplify that. But that's not an immediate program for me. This next bay is where is where a lot of the electrical is. This is where you've got all the different uh, circuit breakers for both the AC uh, and the DC power for the coach, as well as the master on off. Moving to this next bay, there's a lot of water storage that's uh, lo that's located behind uh, these panels, uh, and with the remaining area, this is where I'm going to be keeping my tools, spare fluids things of the sort. This bar here is for use of the awnings. This actually does not have power awnings on it, which is something that we're a little bit mixed about, but uh, these are manual awnings that are supposed to be a whole lot more durable, especially in higher wind conditions. As we get back here to the uh, drive and the tag axles, you can see that I've got this side opened up. And that's because I'm going to be do I'm going to be changing the airbags here and doing some other maintenance, which I'll talk about in a bit. But uh, this this highlights something I really like about this Prevo and Prevos in general is that this is a again this is a commercial bus that's designed to be maintained. So this pan this side panel flips up, gives you really easy access to a lot of components, and you can see this one airbag is just right here. This shock is right here. Uh, you can get easy access to the wheels so that you can remove them. Uh, like I said on the about the fronts, and same here on the tags, uh, you've got tires here that are 365s instead of 315s. And if you look, you can kind of see the difference in tire width between these. Um, I've got the cover off because I'm going to be removing these at some point. As you can see that like with a lot of heavy duty chassis, the uh, bearings are, the hubs are filled with oil. Uh, the bearings are not lubricated with grease. I am going to change that oil uh, when I pull the wheels off. As you head back, you start. we start to get to the engine bay area, which then highlights a lot of what I was, what I'm really happy about. And you can see back here, I guess the lighting's not very good, but you can see the Detroit Diesel Series 60, which is something that I am really happy to have. Uh, here you've got a proper semi-truck engine. It's a 12.7 liter rated at 500 horsepower. These are known as million mile engines. They don't necessarily last that long, but they are known for lasting a long time and being reliable so long as you take care of them. And it's it's really nice to have a bigger, heavier duty, uh, proper truck engine. Um, down here, you've got your, uh, your chassis batteries, which are covered up, but you've got four of them uh, operating at 24 volts. It's four 12 volt batteries, a two series, two parallel configuration. And you can just see how easily accessible everything is. The air filter, you just take off that wing nut, you get right at it. You've got your water separator over there. To open the rear doors on a Prevo, you got a lever that you pull here, and then that gets the back opened. The back of my bus is dirty. You can see the logo for Roadshow out of New Orleans. But it's dirty because I drove it about 1,300 miles home, maybe 1,400 from Arizona. And so here you can see the engine with all the easy access, much nicer than the rear radiator setup because you just open these panels and everything is right here. And you can see how heavy duty everything is. You've got an eight rib belt that drives primarily the alternator, uh, absolutely enormous, massive unit. And then you've got your three V belts 
that drive the gearbox, which includes the AC compressor for the onboard air. Uh, that feeds the driver area only. It does not feed the rest of the bus. That's handled by three rooftop Dometic units. And then you've got your big clutch fan uh, over there that goes to your cooling pack of the intercooler and the radiator. As you get to this side, you can see the other side of the cooling pack area. Again, everything is really accessible and it's designed with maintenance in mind. If you... While I'm back here, maybe for a second, I'll talk about one of the reasons why I wanted to get a specific motorhome chassis Prevo as opposed to doing a bus conversion or getting an entertainer coach. And the biggest reason for that is that on these motorhome chassis Prevos, your steer and your tag axles are about a foot or two further forward um, this, if you, if you look carefully and you see either uh, a seated coach or an entertainer coach, this panel here is not, is not present and you've got the wheels further back. So what does that do for you? Well, the big thing that it does for a motorhome is it will decrease your turning radius because you've got your rear tires further forward and you have a shorter wheelbase. Um, that's Ad additionally helped by the fact that the Prevo tag axles will lift so if you've got a really tight turn you need to make there's a switch up front you flip it the tag axle wheels go up and you're able to make an even tighter turning radius one thing that I've definitely learned from our RV travels is that we do like to go uh, places where we have to make tight turns and it's kind of tight to get a big vehicle in and so this is going to help with that obviously being five foot longer than our previous RV there are places that we've gone that we just won't be able to fit, but that's that's okay. Uh, this will help make it as uh, tight as possible. Here you've got the water and electrical bay, and uh, you've got everything set up nicely. One really cool feature about this is that you can use either hot or cold water coming out of the hose spigot if you're going to hook up a hose to that. Um, and this ha this also has both dual water pumps and a full house water filter. Uh, it has 180 gallons of fresh water storage, which is uh, really, really nice and something that we were looking uh, at, at improving versus what we had previously. The gray and the black tanks are also larger, so we're really looking forward to having those. Uh, we still personally are not fans of drinking water that's uh, inside the house system on an RV, so you may have noticed in the closet we have our five gallon water uh, water jugs that we're going to keep on using but just a whole a whole much better system uh, all around here in this bay you've got the house batteries uh, but the people that we bought this from had put in these lion energy house batteries we've got about twice the capacity that we had previously uh, with this being as electric of a bus as it is it would probably actually benefit from having um, some more batteries than what we have in here right now but we're gonna work with this for the moment. And you may have noticed that these uh, bay doors on this side uh, swing forward as opposed to translating up. And of course that's so that you can open them with the slide out. Um, and these are again, the same level of high build quality. They, they don't look any different than the translating doors, but, um, and, and they feel just as strong. Here's the generator. Uh, this is a very high powered generator. One nice thing about it that's different from the quiet diesels is that this actually will just run at a constant RPM all the time regardless of load and so it makes it a whole lot more uh, pleasant because you don't hear the constant changing in RPM that will tend to wake you up when an air conditioner kicks on or things like that. Uh, and it, it is noticeably quieter, the fact that it's in a quiet box uh, helps quite helps quite a bit. There are some things that I think I can do to make this even quieter that I'll work on But I'll also just open this up and show you that you know, you've got this nice insulated box Everything is located in here. The the exhaust vent for this uh, for the cooling air is underneath the bus uh, I showed you the inlet vent on the other side and then if you look actually towards the back that little exhaust pipe is the exhaust for the for the generator then coming around here to the front, we've got the other side of the full length bay that uh, you saw at the beginning. Last but not least, I'm gonna show you this door here next to the driver. Uh, I've got this little window opened up, and then when you pull up on that little pull, here's where you've got all of the fuses, relays, electrical that are chassis side. You've got really good access to everything right here. Uh, 
And another thing that's really nice is that you've got an auxiliary air pump uh, there. What that does is that provides uh, uh, air for the accessory air system. So that's gonna be the things that control stuff like the slides. You've also got your uh, windshield washer reservoir here, very easily accessible, easy to fill. Something I didn't point out by the engine bay is that there's a couple of these uh, fill ports that let you fill up the air system from an air compressor so that you don't have to necessarily wait for the onboard uh, engine driven air compressor to fill things up. This fill port up here only does the accessory side and again you've got an electric pump that you can just leave running. Uh, and then in the back, there's the that fill port will fill both the front and rear air tanks as well as the accessory air tank. And even with this door, when you close it, it feels very solid. So far I drove this bus the 1400 miles or so back home from Phoenix, and it's just an amazingly different experience. I was able to do 930 miles in one day driving this back. And for comparison, the highest mileage day I ever did with my old RV was 750. I was absolutely exhausted. 930 miles in a day is a lot in any vehicle, but there were a few things that made this possible in this where it wouldn't have been possible at all in the previous RV. Number one is that it just drives so much better and so much smoother. The weather was good and so that helped, but even when there were gusty crosswind conditions, it was not nearly as much of a handful to uh, keep control of on the road. With having a 500 horsepower engine, uh, we were, I was able to keep a higher speed. I was able to set the cruise control at 75 most of the way, and it didn't have any issues with that except on the steep uphills. So you're able to maintain a faster speed both because of the engine and then also because of the comfort level. In addition to being easier to drive and more stable, as well as faster, this bus is also quieter to drive, so that's something that does help you with fatigue over the course of a long day. With all the videos and upgrades that I did to my previous bus, you might be wondering which of those things am I planning on taking and redoing on this bus. I'm going to be doing videos about those in the future. There are a few maintenance things that I'm going to have to deal with. As you may have noticed, I've got a whole pile of airbags over here. Uh, upon getting home, one of the uh, tag axle airbags let loose and is not holding air anymore, so I'm going to ch I needed to change that one. Uh, when I went and I looked around at the other tag uh, airbags, all of them had some level of dry rot, so I just decided to order all eight. I'm going to do them all. As I mentioned, I'm going to change the oil in the hubs for the steer and the dry, uh, tag axle when I have the tires off. I am going to go through and do a complete fluid change on everything in here as well. Another thing that I noticed on the drive home was that the drive shaft has a vibration in it. I am going to pull the drive shaft and I'm going to take it to the local drive shaft shop to have them go through, probably replace the U-joints in it, and put that back in. Additionally, there are a decent number of air leaks on this bus that I need to go through. I've already made progress on those by figuring out that the airbags, at least the one airbag, needs to be replaced. That was probably leaking some on the drive home and I just didn't notice it. Uh, but there was also an air leak behind the dashboard. What that happened to be was one of the 90 degree push to connect air fittings that went between one of the airlines and one of the air pressure gauges. I replaced all three of those because with time, the O-rings that are in those push to connect air fittings can degrade and start to leak. I figured if it had happened at one joint, it was probably likely to happen soon at the other, so I just replaced all three. That made a significant improvement in the ability of the coach to hold air. Uh, that I noticed that it went from leaking down about one PSI a minute, which is right around the DOT limit uh, when parked, to uh, basically one PSI in about 30 minutes, so that's a significant improvement versus what I saw before. The auxiliary air system is still pretty leaky and I'm going to have to go through and figure out where those leaks are, tra tra track them down, and hopefully I'll get that taken care of as well. My goal is to have the air system be as tight as possible, although air systems are never going to be 100% tight. After I take care of some of these initial things, we're going to go on our first, our first trip with this bus, and I'm sure after that we're going to have another list of things to go through. After we've done a trip or two with this, I am planning on doing a video that compares this Prevo bus versus our previous RV and talk about some of the pros and cons of having a proper commercial bus as opposed to a purpose-built RV and things that you might want to consider with those. I hope you found this interesting and entertaining. If you've been wondering about Prevos, hopefully this gave you some insight into some of the reasons why we decided to make the plunge for this as opposed to sticking with a standard RV. Make sure to leave any questions down below and uh, stay tuned for future videos in the future about this. Thanks for watching.